Well, hello, and welcome back once more to the Sages Library. I am your erstwhile librarian, Trevor DeVal. Thank you for joining me here today in the library. Today, we are going to be talking about a game that is very, very special to me, very close to my heart. A game that has seen multiple editions over the years, but today we're going to be talking about the very first edition of this game that, for me, came out in uh, 1987. I discovered it in 1987, I think, 88, around there. This is a game that changed the game for me because of a number of very interesting things which we are going to talk about. The game is Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay First Edition. Not second edition, not third edition, and not fourth edition, first edition. This is this is the original. Now, I first encountered this game in an advertisement in Dragon Magazine. And I immediately fell in love with the atmosphere and the mood of the game. Because, as it turns out, this game is not a typical heroic kind of D&D game where you're in a quasi-medieval setting and you're playing like knights and wizards and clerics. No, this game takes place in a twisted version of our own world, basically. A twisted version of the old world, of the Empire of Germany, basically, the whole Holy Roman Empire. Circa about 15th century. So it's Renaissance instead of medieval. That's a big shift. A lot of things are different. You've got gunpowder weapons, for one thing. Ooh, amazing. Uh, you've got science and the principles of the scientific method, although it's very much in its infancy, and people are still relying on the old ways, more so than those newfangled scientific methods. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you have this wonderful blend of sort of magic and, and early science uh, in a kind of Grimm's fairy tale uh, package. Really, really, really wonderful stuff. The setting of this game is like what happens when D&D meets Call of Cthulhu. You get a gothic horror fantasy role-playing game. You are not playing, like I said, fighters, wizards, clerics, thieves. No, you are playing normal people most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. Which, if you play by the rules, you roll randomly. You don't know what you're going to be until you roll on the charts. So you could wind up with a party of uh, a rat catcher, a grave robber, uh, a road warden, and a wizard's apprentice, right? Uh, or, you know, a baker and a coal, you know, miner, or whatever the case is. It was a very, very, very big switch from what we had seen before. So immediately I was like, wow, this is what it's like when normal people are thrust into this horrifying world where they have no power, where they have no social power, where they have no nothing, but in the end, they're the ones that are kind of called upon to save the world because they're the only ones that recognize the true threat that the nobility and the aristocracy choose to ignore. The, the first campaign, a very classic campaign of this game was called The Enemy Within. And the whole premise of that game uh, campaign basically is that there is this seedy underbelly to the Empire through these various cults to various chaos gods that are trying to undermine the Empire from within and pull it apart using the, old, uh, the vices of the aristocracy against them, basically. Um, so that's the kind of setting of, of the old world right away, and I just fell in love with it instantly. Now, the other thing about this book as a whole is that it is a complete book. It's a complete tome. Everything you need is in this book. Everything from character creation to, to how to use skills, to how to adventure, to the gods, to magic, to combat, to a DM section, to uh, an introductory adventure. Everything you need in this book is here. And this book is chock full of inspiration. I could literally flip to any random page and put my finger down and come up with an idea for an adventure. Like, it, it's just so well done. And the art, oh, the art, especially John Blanche. His art is so great. All of the art in here is just fantastic. It's not super polished. Some of it is kind of primitive by today's standards, but it is so evocative of this world. It is so appropriate to the first edition version of uh, the old world. Really just uh, so many great memories. The system in this uh, game uh, is a bit of a funny little monkey because uh, uh, it was basically the designers were, were trying to do a direct, more or less direct conversion from the tabletop game. But it didn't quite work because the tabletop game was based on D6 rolls and this was based on D, uh, D100 rolls, on percental rolls. So there was some discrepancy there. And long story short, you wound up making characters that were pathetically and hilariously weak. <laughs> Which just meant that you had to earn your way through the world, which was great. Uh, but yeah, uh, early characters in this game are pretty useless. They really got to think on their feet. There's a lot of player skill that goes into the playing of this game to make sure that you don't get killed by a random critical hit, which leads me to the other thing. Critical hits. 
the critical hit rules in this game were brand new for me. Anything like that. I, I mean, I knew that... Um, AD&D, which we were still playing at the time, had these optional critical hit tables you could find in uh, Dragon magazines. Um, but this was the first game that we had come across that that um, that not only took a critical hits as like some sort of special thing that could happen because you know there were critical hits in Merps and Rollmaster and things like this. Uh, I talked about Merps in another episode, which I believe you can find right there. Um, but these critical hits were. were um, particularly applicable to the old world in that they were brutal and grim and just awful and blood would spatter and heads would be knocked off into the mud and it was just awesome just awesome just so appropriate for the game oh first edition critical hits so great <laughs> The system was not without its problems uh, because it was more or less a direct conversion uh, a lot of things broke at certain points uh, but that's okay I'm very forgiving of this game because it was the first edition and these guys, you can you can feel their passion when you read this book. So yes, not every rule is perfectly streamlined and there are some things that just don't make any sense. There was something called the naked, gwar uh, naked dwarf syndrome where dwarves uh, at some point, depending on circumstances, could become so tough that they were harder to wound than a knight in plate mail armor. <laughs> So, ah, what are you going to do? Uh, nothing's perfect, and this was far from it, but it what it lacked in rule sophistication, it made up for in just absolute beauty of atmosphere. Uh, this world is one of my absolute favorite gaming worlds. I've returned to it many times over the years. I returned to it in 2nd edition, I returned to it in 3rd edition, and uh, I've briefly made a foray into 4th edition as well, but 1st edition will always be my preferred version of Warhammer. Uh, craziness aside, crazy rule contradictions aside, uh, this game as a game, as a product, as, as a single tome, as a single book, as a single work, uh, this game will always have a, a just a, an absolute uh, sacred place on these hallowed shelves here in the library. Thanks so much for joining me, and if you want to help support the show, you can do so through Patreon. Uh, there's a link in the notes below, or you can buy some of the uh, sponsored products through uh, Drive Through RPG links. Uh, I'm an affiliate for Drive Through RPG, so every time you buy something through the links, uh, I get a little, I get a little kickback. It costs you no more; it's, it's the exact same price, but um, it helps support the show that way. So uh, thanks, and we'll uh, see you again on the next episode of the Sages Library. Thank you.